Right, so welcome to another episode. This time we're on the Vauxhall theme instead of the old Fords. So this is um, an SRI Turbo 190 Z20 let engine. Um, there's only 25 of these made in red. Uh, this one's had a respray, it looks really good. But it's uh, got the usual bits wrong with it that we need to go over. It's got um, some oil leaks here and there. Now these engines should not leak oil at all. It's not an excuse. Um, a lot of people go, oh, it's not a Z let if it don't leak oil. They should not leak oil. If you use the proper gaskets and you fit them properly and you do everything right, the engine should be bone dry. None of my engines leak oil. So let's get this engine oil free. Um, also gonna check when we've got the sumps off, if it's got a Z20 LEH balance shaft to leak. If it hasn't, then we're gonna do that at the same time. So we won't know until the sumps off whether it's got balance of shafts or not. So let's get the car up in the air, get the sumps off and start work on it. Uh, so the car's up in the air, I've just dropped the oil out the sump um, and just having a look about to see what the problem is. Um, Cause we ain't had that up in the air, just, uh, just knew that it had an oil leak. You can see it's running down here. Um, it's possible it can be a rear main seal, but it is running from up this top of the sump as well, around this part of the sump. Um, so the sump gaskets are leaking anyway, so they've got to be replaced. So what we're going to do is uh, pull out this sump, take off the downpipe, change the gaskets out properly, do them all properly, um, so they seal. And if it's the rear main, we're going to have to pull this gearbox off. You can see it's been leaking for a while. I don't know if people just expect um, oil leaks to sort themselves, but they're not going to. Well, that's a shame because I've just took the exhaust off and the lower part of the sump, and I wanted to show you how to do an LEH delete in this video. Um, which is the balancer shafts that come on the Z20 LET and the Z20 LEH doesn't have it because they have a uh, dual mass flywheel. Uh, so it's a nice upgrade for the Z20 LETs, but this one's already been done because this uh, engine had been built at some point, um, didn't have much proof and much receipt, so you've got to take them with a pinch of salt. But when they've been rebuilt, you can't really put the balancer shafts back in because they've all got to be shimmed and everything and it just doesn't work. So it's quicker to just put a, a delete in, but you can see this one's had a delete. So I'm going to take this upper part of the uh, sump off so we can see it a bit clearer. So just a quick one while I'm under here. A lot of people message me, they can't get their sump off. Um, they, you cannot take this sump off with this metal section on as well. Um, you have to take undo the metal section of the sump, which is the lower part, and then you have to unbolt, this is the oil level sensor, because there's three bolts inside the sump. You can see there's one there, one there, and one over the back here. And there's also these bolts on the block. So you can see uh, it goes from the uh, sump to the gearbox, and there's another one up here as well, but this one's come out or it's been left out. So that's the reason that you won't be able to get your sump off, leaving this metal part on. So before you uh, try to remove the sump, you're gonna have to remove the engine mount because you've got to raise this engine up. The sump doesn't clear the subframe um, without the engine being raised a couple of inches. There's plenty of ways you can do that. You can jack it up also. Uh, I like to do it from the top. So I just use my engine crane um, and then I just support the engine like I was gonna pull the engine out. So I'll mount a mount here, mount a mount here, put some strapping across, raise the engine and I can get the sump off. So I just um, released the engine mount. You can see it's up about two inches. So all you gotta do is take off these three bolts. There's one down there, one there, one there. Um, you raise the engine up probably about two inches. That's enough to get the clearance on the sump. Um, don't raise it any more than that because you're going to put a lot of strain unless you're going to start taking bits off on the wiring and loom, etc. So we've got the sump off now. Going to give it a proper clean up. Um, these gaskets are actually GM gaskets, which is either good or worrying whether they've spent the money on proper GM parts or they've reused the old ones, which I'm not sure. So um, yeah, we're going to clean up this sump. Uh, get all the uh, nasty crud and that off it. Uh, replace these gaskets with some proper ones done properly, and hopefully we should be leaking. So just give the sump a quick clean up, and I, I think I can see why it was leaking, which is good. Um, this sump has been painted, um, just from a spray can by the looks of things, but when they painted it, they didn't tape it up. So you can see all around here, it's all got paint. And as soon as it heats, get the heat cycles throughout the sump, it just starts to break off. You can see where some of the paint has started to break off here. So it's uh, basically the gasket's not sealing anymore. So we're going to get rid of this paint back to the bare aluminium. Um, whenever you're going to paint your sumps, just any of the mating faces that are going to be gaskets and that. So you can see clearly here where it's all broken away. Just um, take them up, 
You can paint the rest of the sump, but just tape up the mating faces for the gaskets. We all got rid of all that nasty crusty paint. It was also on this side as well. So you can see it's nicely cleaned off now. So the gasket will seal properly. So in these bottom end gasket kits, this is the oil level sensor. It doesn't come with this seal. Um, if you don't replace this seal, you're gonna literally have a bad, bad oil leak coming out of here and running down here and looking like the sump gasket's leaking, but it's not, it's in here. Uh, you can see there's some uh, paint in there I just need to get rid of. But if you don't replace that, uh, I'll link, I'll put a part number link in the description with the part number for that seal. You need to order one of them first because if you're gonna take this oil level seal out, this will be brittle and when you put it back in, it's just gonna leak. So these are the bottom end gasket kits that you get for these cars. Um, I just wanted to run you through the little few little bits you get on it. Um, you can buy these gaskets, this upper and lower sump gasket, uh, separately, but they're around, I don't know, 38 quid for the two. Um, this kit here was, I think, £46, pounds, something like that, and you get everything in it. It's well worth having the spares. Um, we didn't know if the rear main was gone, so we got one with a rear main in it anyway, so we can change it if we needed, say, buying that separately. So that's the rear main seal that goes on the crankshaft. This is the oil seal that goes in the oil pump. So this is the oil pump gasket, which we don't obviously need because we're not taking the oil pump off. That's that one there. Uh, that's the lower sump and that's the upper sump. And in here we've just got the clip. That's for the um, oil level sensor. That just clips on that. And then we've got this here is for the oil pickup pipe, which you're not gonna change. Don't need to change that, it's been recently done. And these ones are uh, water pumps. And then also you've got this one here. This is for the breather. I'm gonna swap that one out. Also, while we're on the subject of the gaskets, never use sealant on these gaskets. They work um, like a, they've got like a special system that they work on. You can see it's like a double channel, um, stops the oil, lets it run back, etc. As soon as you start filling that up with sealant, it just bypasses it, comes straight out of the sump. So using sealant on these gaskets will actually work against you and it will actually leak more by using sealant. So use these dry. Don't use any sealant on the sump. So when you talk them up properly, use a proper gasket kit. So the three that I recommend is obviously GM, Victor Ryan's. Victor Ryan's are the suppliers for GM, um, and then L-Ring, which is an OE type uh, system. These are the only ones that I'd use. Um, Victor Ryan's is probably better than L-Ring, but a lot of people say these are OE, they're not. Whenever I get a GM gasket kit, they've always got Victor Ryan's head gaskets, gaskets, all sorts of things. So um, they're a mixture of L-Wing and the Victor Ryan. So they're the three kits that I'd use. A quick one here, although I don't like using sealant at all. If you see where this main cap right there, um, a lot of people don't put enough sealant on when they put that main cap on. You can see there's uh, like a slight gap. But you can see the line on here where the gasket runs around and if you don't put enough sealant in this section here you can see it leaks leaks into this bolt hole and runs down the sump looks like the rear main's leaking so what i normally do is put a tiny blob of sealant on there and the other one on there and that just allows the uh, gasket to seal uh, a bit better up against the surface but don't put any gasket sealer anywhere all the else. bolts to the upper sump these ones and the ones inside they're all 20 newton meters even these long ones here and then the gearbox to the upper sump bolts, these are 15 mils, these are all 40 newton meters. On to the lower half of the sump now. So we're gonna bolt in this oil level sensor, but first off, degrease, brake clean, get this thing absolutely spotless, jet wash it out, whatever you gotta do. You don't want no grit, no dust in there. Um, so also on the oil level sensor, change the seal. This is the seal's number. 9054291 they come in a pack of two again eight to ten newton meters with these bolts um the cable tied from the factory as well to stop the wiring moving around while the lower sumps off i always go about changing these bolts so these bolts have got like a torx head on them when these strip which they always do they're a nightmare to get off you've got to drill out the sump and everything so while they're off and they've come off nicely perfect time to change them over so i change them over to a cap head a nice stainless fitting, looks a lot better. And I also put a little stainless wash all on these, it as well. Uh, bolts for the lower sump, they're all done up. Make sure you put this oil level sensor in first before you put the sump and now put this clip in um, so it doesn't drop down the sump because otherwise you're gonna have to take the sump back off. These are done up to uh, 10 newton meters. The GM specs are eight newton meters plus 30 degrees. I always just do that to 10 newton meters and they're always perfect. So now put a fresh new sump plug in. So now the sumps are on. 
just uh, drop down your engine. You can drop it back down onto the mount. And then you can uh, get them bolts so back in. So always prime up your oil filter before you put it on. Um, they, you don't want the engine to be running dry on first startup. That first couple of seconds is really important on startup. So just fill it up uh, three quarters of the way with oil. Um, and that way it won't run out when you put it on the oil pump. And also give it a little bit of a wipe around the seal. Only do this up to hand tight, as tight as you can with two don't hands. Don't forget really. to change out your oil filter, obviously, but some people do forget. The easiest way on these cars, just full lock the wheel to the right. You can even pull it even further. And you can get to the oil filter without even taking the wheel off. So let that drain for a while because the oil cooler goes into the um, thermostat housing on the oil filter. And so you're basically draining out the oil cooler as well. So it's going to take a little while to drain out. Um, Vauxhall luckily put a lovely little hole on the top of the subframe just so it can run out. But yeah, so let it drain out for a good five, 10 minutes before well, you put the, it on. Uh, bumpers off. We've got a few other bits to do. Um, got to sort out a few little issues, just get the car uh, up to a good standard. Um, there's loads of little bits that need doing. Uh, we're going to remove all the aircon pump and um, all the aircon pipe work because that hadn't been removed. Um, it's got a VXR radiator in there at the minute, it looks like. Uh, they don't fit very well, so we're going to change that out as well. Um, there's like some wiring needs sorting out. Um, I I've just unplugged that, so that's nothing to do with it. Uh, we're going to mount this intercooler differently as well. I'm not uh, too keen on how the uh, intercooler is mounted. And that allows us to get rid of this nasty fan at the back, which is pretty much touching the pre-cap pipe at the minute. All that wiring is going to be tidied so this up. This is the box of goodies we've got for the car. So we've got uh, a set of twin spiral fans in there. Nice, fresh, new ones. Um, also got a 42 millimeter alloy radiator. So um, the standard ZLET radiator is 32 millimeter and it's copper with plastic end caps. Um, this is 42 millimeter, so another 10 millimeter thick. So it carries a lot more water for cooling properties and obviously alloy dissipates heat a lot lot better than uh, copper does so yeah very well made bit of kit so we're going to mount the twin fans to that we're going to get rid of the aircon delete um, all the wires the fans that out. we've gone for are um, new spiral fans uh, 10 inch blowers so we've got a pair of these um, yeah, if you're going to get a set of fans, don't bother buying a set of cheap eBay ones. Uh, I've got a set of spiral fans that I've had on three cars now. They last forever, whereas the cheap eBay ones, they won't push enough air. They're still over overheating issues, um, and they'll just burn out as well. Uh, there's loads of problems with them. Just get yourself a genuine set. Either get um, spiral, Kenlo, or Passit. They're the three that I recommend. So these fans are used in motorsport as well. All the WRC teams and everything use them. So there's another one in here. So we're going to wire these into the original fan wiring as well. So we're going to have a pair of them. So that's how they're going to sit on the car. Um, I like to get the spiral fans with the, they've got like a flat edge to them. You can see it there. It allows you to fit them closer together if you're in a tight space. We still have an extra inch on the side here. So we could have went an inch bigger fans if we wanted, but I use these size fans on all my cars and they run perfectly. Before I'm taking any of the pipe work off, I just want to do a boost leak check on it, just so that uh, I can address the boost leaks while the uh, intercooler's off and the pipe work's off. Um, I just plugged it in straight away, uh, found the usual one around the top hat. So you can hear it. So I know we pressurise to about 25, 30 pounds. So you can hear that, but I'm going to show you it visually. So let's quickly pressurise the system. You can hear it leaking. So you can see when I put my finger over it, it stops the leak. So that's where all your boost is going. So you're just losing power and the turbo's working a lot harder. I just pulled that rad out. You can see the size of this um, standard fan, it's enormous. So it's going to look a lot more compact. So that's the aircon fan as well. That's really not needed on there as well either. So the uh, alloy setup with the new fans will look a lot better. While this is all apart, we're going to get rid of the aircon. So we're going to get rid of the pump, all the tensioner. Um, even going to take off the crank pulley because we're going to put a new pulley on there as well. So we're going to get that belt off, tidy this up a little Blimey, bit. I forgot how much this lot weighs. So this must weigh about five kilos. So uh, this old steel pulley, I can't believe they put that on the end of the crank. At least these are made out of aluminium, but even the tension is heavy. I'm not used to all this heaviness, so all my cars are normally stripped back to bare bones. Just a quick one. There's no, definitely no need for all this sealant stuff, this exhaust paste. 
um, on the flanges. You can get them to seal without it. There's loads on this as well. Just gonna give this a wire brush up now. But whenever you get any of these pre-cats, always make sure you've got the V-band lip on them. There's a lot of cheap ones on eBay. They haven't got this lip inside them and they're gonna blow all the time. You're never gonna stop it. So a lot of people ask me, they can't get this V-band to seal around the turbo. Um, normally it's because you're hanging this damn pipe off of this while you're trying to do it up. Um, basically you've got to leave everything loose. You can see all, it's, it's still on there, but it's loose. You've got to have an axle stand holding up the damn pipe to support the weight of it so it's not hanging off here. And look through the gap in the V-band and then make sure that the V-band is sealing with the turbo so there's no gaps or anything there and that your, your, your clamp spins nice and freely. Leave all the damn pipe loose, but so it's close enough to the flange, you can see there. And then you can do this up so that it's lovely and flush along here. Do it up really, really tight. And then you can do up the damn pipe and the damn pipe will then pull up into the uh, pre-cat itself. And that way you have no blows around this V-band. So as you see that the car had an Astra Mark V VXR radiator in, they're a lot longer and they sit differently as well. Um, these are the Astra Mark V brackets that they use. You can see they're a lot different. These are the Astra Mark IV. So we've had to sw switch back over to the Mark IV Astra uh, radiator brackets because the alloy red we've got is the um, Astra Mark IV. It's a lot thicker. So the red's in there looking uh, good. They left out the bung for the lower uh, drainage plug. So I'm gonna have to get one of them or mess them. Are on there. Just gonna get this wiring sorted out, make it nice and tidy, so it's out of the way. Um, and attach it to this uh, loom that comes off the coolant ECU as well, and then trim all that lot back, make it look tidier, tuck it up under there. So I'm just making up a little mini sub loom for these um, fan wiring. So I've just used proper grip crimp connections with um, glued shrink tubing as well, just so that they're nice and waterproof, because they're gonna be at the front of the car. So we're gonna obviously number these up positive and negative, because they're both red and make a little uh, braided loom up with some shrink tube for them. So I've just pulled the coolant ECU loom off of the car that feeds the fans because it's a lot of this wiring is not needed now. So I'm gonna strip it all back, tidy it up, make it look a little bit more presentable. There's a couple of little cuts and that that have been done in it. I'm gonna solder them up properly, tidy it up and put it underneath the chassis leg. I thought I'd take it off the car, it'd be a lot easier to do. So that's getting there. You can see how much of the wiring is not needed. Um, and it's the first thing you see when you open the bonnet. You need to keep all these um, fan temperature regulators and stuff in as well, which is un unfortunate, and the uh, pressure switch for the aircon rad. But yeah, you can get rid of a ton of the wire and you can tuck it up, up underneath the chassis, so it's gonna look a lot That's fresher. what we're left with, nice little sub loom. I like to plug in all these connectors. Got to join this to the fans as well. Um, if you plug it all in like this and have a little sub loom, that you're gonna get no lights coming up on the dash, no faults with the fans, so the fans won't be on constantly. You can see I've plugged in all the um, pressure sensors and everything as well. So I'm just gonna tape this up, make it look a little bit prettier. This is the modified mini coolant ECU loom, all um, finished. You can see how much tidier that looks. It was four or five foot long before. Now it's down to about a two foot section. Um, these, sex these wires here, they will go to the fans and they'll run the fans. You can see there's like a temperature plugs that um, tell the fans how much to regulate the speed of the fans. A lot of people try taking these out, cause all sorts of problems, so make sure they're all plugged in. So that'll be bolted to the chassis leg, and then this is just gonna plug Obviously into that. Obviously we've removed the bottom crank pulley off the car because this is like an oversized one, and we've gone to an undersized uh, crank pulley. The other advantage is, is this weighs an absolute ton. So uh, I'd estimate that's a good three kilos. Um, this thing, doesn't even weigh a kilo. It's uh, ridiculously light. It's an underdrive pulley as well, so you can see the size difference. Um, that's just the guard at the back, but you can see the size difference of the pulley, which means it rotates slower. It's got less uh, drain on the belt. So we've got a shorter belt to go on it as well, and then we're gonna modify the existing alternator bracket. Um, you can buy alternator brackets as well for these. So it's gonna be a lot of weight off the crank. These things are proper beautiful billet aluminium, properly machined, all um, machined out, so it's a lot lighter and anodalized in black, so goes for but years. that's the fans all wired in. You can see I've made a mini little sub loom up, so they're all hard wired in. Nice bit of braided loom, sub loom that's gonna tuck up under there, gonna cable tie it all. I've also put the uh, mini sub loom in. You can see how much shorter that is now. Just this bit of loom here. That's all bolted now to the chassis leg. You can see it's all spaced up there. 
Um, so I'm just going to cable tie all this wiring so it's nice and tidy. So a nice fresh crank pulley on, the belt's all on. Got lovely new bolts on it as well. Um, I always lock tight these bolts up because you never want them coming up down because the vibration will destroy everything. And also um, around the crank drive as well, put some copper grease, otherwise you're never going to get that aluminium back off. So we're nearly done there. Just fitted the intercooler, done a boost leak check. No boost leaks. Black intercooler with a black radiator go brilliantly. Uh, even with the black pipe work, the silver rocker cover, I like it. Good colour coding. Um, the red cars, red and black, go nice together. It, uh, a bit more stealthy than back in the 2000s when we used to run alloy radiators, big shiny intercoolers where we wanted to tell everyone it was a turbocharged car, but nowadays everything's turbocharged. Um, you can see the clearance we've got now, no more wiring down there, don't look untidy anymore. Uh, yeah, just a good looking tidy engine bay. One of the last things that needs to be done on the car is we need to fit a traction control loom so we can switch off the traction control because with the high torque maps for the stage 3.5 maps, as soon as it starts spinning up the front wheels, um, the traction control kicks in and it's absolutely uh, useless. So we're going to fit this. This is a GM loom. This pin goes into the back of the ABS connector and this is a power for the switch. Um, it's not that difficult to fit, just got to remove a few bits from the back of the ABS pump. Run this through the car and we've got the switch in the car so you've got already. To access the back of the ABS pump, like I said, just remove the fuse um, and the relay box. And take off the plastic cover off the back of the connector. You obviously have to remove the connector off the ABS pump as well, which is there. That's the ABS pump. This has already got a pin on it. You literally just take out the white grommet, pop that in. And that just turns off the traction control. If you want to turn off traction control and the stability control, it's pin 25. Then run your loom to the back of the um, switch. You want to get yourself a traction control switch. This one's got heated seats as well because it's got 40 heated lever. Take out your ashtray, take out your cigarette lighter, which we've turned into a USB port, and then plug it in the back. And then what you do then is you wire this in, this one that comes off here, this is the power for it. I always wire it into the um, back of the cigarette lighter illumination and then that allows you to when you turn on the lights you can see it lights up they all light up our, um, we're going to change that because it's blue at the minute so we're going to change the bulb back to a standard color so we're done um, we can now turn traction control on and off just like we should have been able to